Uh, remind those of you who may be newer that our, the notes are on the app, and, and I know these messages that we're going through, especially in this series, have a lot to them. So all the verses and the main points are, are on the notes of the app if you ever missed that. The other thing, too, is that we, we leave it there. So let's just say you don't have the app right now. Don't sweat it. Um, afterwards, you can, right out on the little square table here, there's a sheet that explains how you get the app. You can get that. And we don't take those notes down until at the end of the week. So you have several uh, things. And then also, if you do take notes, don't forget at the end to hit that little share button. And you can either text it to yourself or email it to yourself. So you'll have those um, for later. Um, all right, let's jump into it. One of the um, cornerstones of a healthy relationship. It could be uh, friends. It could be uh, spouses. It could be parent to child. Healthy relationship, period. Is consistency. Uh, that actually should be one of the key questions in the back of our minds. If we're entering a relationship, uh, the, uh, we look at a person and say, are you consistent? Are you consistent? See, consistency means maintaining a regular pattern of behavior. A, a consistent person exhibits qualities such as uh, dependability and predictability. The, the fundamental question behind it is, uh, can I count on you? Is the person that I see today the same person that I saw yesterday? You see, this is one of the, the really tough things. Let's just say in, in um, a relationship, if you've ever had a, a relationship or know someone who's had a relationship with an addict, okay? A lot of times, uh, folks that are struggling with certain things are fine, but then there are times when they're not. The problem is, you never really know when that is. You never know what it is. And some of you who maybe grew up in an alcoholic family, right, you, you, may, you may remember uh, when you went home wondering, okay, are they sober or not? Because it made a difference. They weren't consistent. You didn't, you didn't come home to the same thing or they didn't come home the same way. It was different depending on whether they were using, or maybe somebody just, there's some folks who just wrestle with anger. It has nothing to do with drugs and alcohol, whatnot. It's just like, is this a good day? Is this a bad day? Are they feeling sorry for themselves or not? It, 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 it's a tough thing, but it is an important thing. When you, when you lack consistency, there's a breakdown of communication and trust. Because you don't know what you're going to get. One day, you know, jumping on the couch is fine. The next day, jumping on the couch will get you a backhand, right? One day, a good morning, how are you is great. The next day, a good morning, how are you? Don't talk to me, kind of a thing. And, and, and that just, it just, it breeds cautiousness. It, it breeds a, a, a lack of consistency and dependability in a relationship that breaks down the relationship. Because one day someone can be attentive and kind, and the next day they're neglectful and abusive. Or and sometimes it's the next hour. And some of you, unfortunately, have been in these kinds of relationships. You know exactly what I'm talking about. It's really no relationship at all. And it could be in a lot of times that that person is, is fantastic. But in those moments when they're not, it is hell on earth a lot of times. And so when we look at healthy relationships, we look for consistency. We want to grow and be more and more consistent. And as we seek to know God, which is what this series is all about, it's important to know whether or not God is consistent. And the simple answer to that is God is unchanging. God is unchanging. Now, I could tell you the seminary word that we use, which is immutable, but all you need to know is immutable means he does not change. So let's just stick with that. The God does not change. And so there's several different aspects about, uh, uh, about this, and we're going to cover six of them uh, today. Now, this at times could seem way up here, all right? So can, can I just say, give... Just listen to it. Take away from it what you can. But may I also say that this is really, really important. It's really important because, when you, again, if you get in a relationship with somebody, you want to know, are they dependable? Are they consistent? And then how do you determine that? 
And so, so just do the best you can. If there are things that kind of go up here, that's fine. That's why I give you all the verses and everything. You can go back and look at it yourself so you can kind of chew on this. Because let me, let me tell you, these, I'm still chewing on this, and I went through all this higher education. I went through all of it this week. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a glimpse of what I found out, but there's still so much more. I'm still finding out. And that's the nature of who God is. All right, so let's jump into this. Number one, God's life does not change. Life, as, as, as we understand it, he, he really is something different, but as we understand, God's life does not change. So in Psalm 102, verses 25 through 27, the psalmist cries out this, In the beginning, God, you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. He created it all. They will perish. That, by the way, that doesn't mean we shouldn't take care of it. But the truth is, no matter how well we take care of it, it will perish eventually. Second law of thermodynamics, by the way. It's science. <laughs> Anyhow, they will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like a garment. Like clothing, you will change them, and they will be discarded. But, in contrast, you remain the same. And your years will never end. Uh, people come and go, cities, buildings come and go, mountains and valleys come and go. But God, God never abdicates his throne. He does not. He is from everlasting to everlasting. He is not going away. Uh, this passage, interesting enough, is also quoted in the Hebrews uh, chapter 1, verses 10 through 12, Almost verbatim, but in Hebrews it applies to Jesus. That he is also uh, forever, remains the same, and will never end. And in essence, what this means is this. God has always been there, and he will always be there. God has always been there, and he will always be there. And, that, and there's, there's two really cool things that come out, of, come out of that. Number one, God is not going away. God is not going away. But there's another thing I want you to understand this, is that God has an eternal perspective. So um, if you're at least over 26, and maybe if you're under 26, but if you're over 26, what you realize about life is that what you thought you know, you didn't really know. And what you know now is good, but you'll probably learn more later. If you're under 26, you probably think you've, you've got it. You've figured it out. Everybody else is an idiot. Okay? And we were all there, so I'm not pointing any fingers. All right? But if you're older than that, what you understand is that for human beings, there's so much that we haven't experienced. There's so much that we haven't learned. But for, but for God, he was around before even time began, but he's been around since the beginning of time. There is nothing under the sun that you and I are seeing and I'm freaking out about that God has not already seen. He is eternal. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm surprised he doesn't get bored. He's not human where he gets bored, but, but you, you understand my point. And so not only is he always there, but he has an eternal perspective. All right, so God's life does not change. God's character does not change. God's character does not change. And again, all of us know someone, maybe this is you yourself, but all of us know somebody who was like this when they were younger and they're not like this now. We all know somebody that, that uh, before the surgery was this way and after surgery was this, or before somebody passed away was like this and after they passed away was like this, or before they got clean and sober they were like this and after they got clean. People change. We all change. All of us. Our character changes. Hopefully for the good, but sometimes not so much. But God's character does not change. It does not change. Exodus chapter 3, verses 13 through 14, right? Uh, God is calling Moses to, to lead, and Moses keeps asking questions. He's really just trying to get out of it. But he keeps asking questions, and one of the questions he asks in verse 13, Moses said to God, well, suppose I go to the Israelites, because you've asked me to go to them, and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, what is his name? Then what shall I tell them? Now, this is interesting, because if you read the Hebrew scriptures, what you understand is in this culture, a name usually reflects the essence of someone, right? So Esau was named Esau because he was so hairy, 
right? And, and, and different names come from someone's background. So in essence, uh, Moses is saying, how do I sum up who's sending me? And the interesting thing is God does not give him a name. Verse 14, God said to Moses, I am who I am. That is what you are to say, the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. Now, I am is a, a Yahweh. It's a dynamic name. It's based on the Hebrew verb to be or to become. In essence, God is saying, I'm the self-existence one who always was, who always is, and always will be. I'm faithful and dependable. Dependable. I just am, period. You cannot box me in. You cannot qualify me. You cannot quantify me. I just am. And then in James chapter 1, verse 17, James says this. He says, Every good and perfect gift is from heaven above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who, speaking about the Father, does not change like shifting shadows. In other words, when the light's here, the shadow's there. But when the light's there, the shadow moves. And sometimes there is no shadow at all at high new. And again, in the course of human life, our temperaments change. Our, our, uh, the way we view life changes. Our knowledge changes. But this is not true with our Creator. His character is always trustworthy. It's always reliable. God is, for us, undaunted by our inconsistencies and unfaithfulness. You see, the, the truth is, a lot of times the way I, I, uh, I, I try not to do this, but it's true about me. The way I treat my kids, or even, quite frankly, the people I work with, depends on how they treated me. <laughs> right? And sometimes my mood that day, or, or whether or not you know, I, um, I'm feeling well. But with God, the way he treats us, it's consistent. It's, it is his character. It does not change with a mood. God is consistent in his character. So when, so when the scripture says that God is love, it means 100%, without a shadow of doubt, no exceptions, God is love from beginning of time to the middle of time to the end of time into eternity. When it says that God is just, that is his character. That means he is always just. Beginning, middle and end. His character does not change. It is 100% consistent, dependable. God's character does not change. Third, God's truth does not change. God's truth does not change. The things that I believed yesterday, some of them I still believe, a lot of them I don't. One of the most frustrating things uh, to me is when new facts come out and people who had old ideas aren't willing to go, I was wrong. Well, they should. But with God, that, that's not something he needs to do. Isaiah chapter 40 says this. It says, a voice, cries, a voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All mankind are like grass and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall because the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely the people are grass, temporal. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God stands forever. In this context, he's saying that Assyria, who had, who had bothered the Jews, was gone, and Babylon was gone. In other words, the nations come and go. But when God says, I will stand with my people, when God says, I will bless my people, his word abides forever. Sometimes people say something that they don't really mean simply because they don't know their own mind or it's the heat of the moment. Our views change, right? We, freak, we frequently find that uh, we can no longer stand behind the things that we used to stand about. But God does not suffer from this. God does not suffer from this because there is nothing he needs to learn. There is nothing he needs to learn. There is no new information to God. Luke 21 says it this way, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away, Jesus says. I mean, when you look at, in, in terms of my life, earth and the heavens are long-lasting. 
And even if you think the earth is going by the wayside, the stars aren't. They are long lasting. But this says that is nothing compared. Jesus says the words that I'm speaking to you now. The words of human beings, my words, can be unstable things, but not so the words of God. They stand forever as abidingly valid expressions of his mind and thought. No circumstances prompt him to recall them. No changes in his own thinking require him to amend them. His truth does not change. Because he knows, he, he is the ultimate know-it-all. Fortunately, by his character, he's not as bad as other know-it-alls. But he is the ultimate know-it-all. And, and part of the eternality of, of, of God, and this is hard to explain. I, I've explained it before, and the best way I can explain it is this. Um, we understand through science that they're, they're, the starlight that we see is not the starlight of today. So if you were able to travel to a star, let's say it would take you years and years and years to travel to that star, right? The light that leaves that star today won't reach us for years, hundreds of years, a thousand years, okay? So technically, the, the light that we are seeing from the star is in the past. It's not present. If somehow you could be on Earth and on that star at the same time, you could see the present, the light leaving, and the past, the light receiving. Are you following me so far? I'm not asking if you understanding, but are you following? Okay? In essence, that is what time is like for God. Time is like light. He has, not, I'm not talking about literally, this is just the way for our to understand it. He has his left foot at the beginning of what we call time. He has his right foot in time, which we don't even, haven't even experienced yet, at the end of time. And he sees it all at once. Yes, it's very complicated. But I will say this. If you can see beginning, middle, and end all at once, forget the fact that you created it, right? Nothing surprises you. Nothing surprises you. You already know the result of what, you, what the actions are going to be. You already know the result of your, of your truth. So when God's truth does not change. So this is the problem, by the way, with the whole idea of being progressive. See, the idea of being progressive is we understood this. Now we're smarter and we understand something new. And by the way, human beings have and should progress. Because we're playing catch up with God. But our progress should never seem to go past God. There's one politician who shall remain nameless that several election cycles ago was asked about the Bible and a certain topic. Well, the Bible says this about it. And their response is, well, then the Bible should change. No, it shouldn't. No, it shouldn't. It doesn't matter how, how much society has changed. It doesn't matter how much people has changed. God's truth does not change because it's steeped in what is true, period, end of question. So, so here's the bottom line of this. If you find yourself falling along in contrary to God's word, and not just what one person says it is, but I'm saying from, from the beginning of time to now, it's pretty consistent that this is true. You are wrong. Because God's word never changes. All right. Next, God's ways do not change. God's ways do not change. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, Paul writes this. He says, these things, he's talking about the things in the Hebrew scriptures, the Old Testament, happened to them as examples and were written down as warnings for us on whom the fulfillment of the ages has come. So basically, you know, there are warning signs so you don't go off the road. If you were to take out and say, you know what, that whole Old Testament thing, I'll just, I think I'll skip over that. It's like saying, just take those warning signs down, I'll drive fine. No, you won't. You go right off the edge. Because it was written for that. What, what, how God interacted with people in the past are warnings for us today. There was warnings for, uh, in the, for the first centuries, warnings and encouragement, by the way, for us today. When the Israelites disobeyed, they received correction. When they repented, they were forgiven and drawn near to God. It is the same today. God continues to act 
towards sinful men and women in the same way that he did in the Bible story. Now, I understand there is this, there is this thought out there that you know, God in the old was a God of judgment, and in the new, he's a God of grace. In essence, what you're saying is, is somewhere along the way, God's ways change. And I would say if that's what you're saying, you don't understand God and you're misreading the Bible. The truth is, if you read the Hebrew Scriptures, there is a ton of grace. A lot more grace than I would have ever given anybody. Time after time after time, there is judgment. The other thing, too, by the way, is if you read the first uh, part of Revelation, when, it, when, it come, when God comes to the church, the Christian church, and judges it, he, just like he did the Israelite people, he will judge the church. He will, I believe, Trinity Church is going to stand before God and God's going to say, were you a light? Did you love me passionately? Did you forsake your first love? We will give an account just like Israel did. God has not changed. God has not changed. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean, by the way, he doesn't change his ways with the situation. So let me give you an example. Okay, there's, there, right now, our three-year-old is not allowed to go out the front door on her own. Okay? And that, that, is, that is the way. Now, when she's as old as my, my young adults, that would be a stupid rule to have. Okay? But, but, and so the rule has changed, but, but the, the basic heart behind it has not changed, which is safety. Right? So now we have new rules, Right? The new rules are, you know, you don't, you don't drive in a, in a vehicle that is unkept or that somebody's been drinking. So my, the way is the same, but how I apply it to each person or to each situation or each phase of life or each century of history may be different, but that doesn't change the ways. God's ways are the same. So if he, if he called his people to repent in the Hebrew Scriptures, he calls his people now. If he was faithful and did miracles in the Hebrew Scriptures, he'll be faithful and do it now. If, if, in, the, if in the New Testament God used the Holy Spirit to do incredible miracles, he can do incredible miracles now. Now, he may decide, depending on situations and whatnot, you know, to do more here and not as many there. That doesn't change his ways. But on the other hand, what it does say is that, he's, that he did, and he will, and he still will. His ways do not change. Next, God's purposes do not change. God's purposes do not change. In Numbers chapter 23, verse 19, it says, God is not a man or a human being that he shall... That doesn't say a lot about us. <laughs> He's basically saying that's the nature of mankind. We lie. God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise... And not fulfill. And by the way, the answer to those, those rhetorical, no. God does not speak and not act. In other words, if he says something, he's going to do it. He does not promise and not fulfill. God is different from us. Our experience is, is that people do lie. Our, our experience is that people do change their mind. Our experience is that people do speak and not act. Our experience is that people make promises and don't fulfill them. People who generally do this, we think very, very highly of. As a matter of fact, we, we treat them as unicorns, especially in our world and society today. But, but this is God through and through for all time. So God never has a, a need to, to repent of something he did wrong or moral, ethical misdeed. His, his purpose never changes. His word always produces the desired result. It's never uttered in, in, in the void. In Psalm 33, 11, it says this, But the plans of the Lord stand firm forever, the purposes of his heart through all generations. So a couple of just quick observations here. One, understand God's plans. If his purposes never change, his plans go through time. They go through time. In other words, I don't know about you, but I've spent most of my life planning somewhere between 1970 and I'll be lucky at 2070. That ain't going to happen, but that's, that's my time. And, and quite frankly, as the world gets worse and I get older, I'm not cons concerned as much because I'm not going to be around. I'm just being honest. And I know we think that way because there's no way we'd, we'd run up the national debt the way we have if we didn't believe that. The percentages that, that are, that's, I'm sorry, that's a side note. Okay, sorry. <laughs> 
Mark that, that was Joel King. That has no bearing whatsoever, all right? Sorry, I apologize for that. The, but the point is, is that God, God's plan isn't just for my life and my kid's life. God's plan is for all of time and into eternity. We're, we're, looking at, we're looking at this. And, and by the way, that's what a good parent does. A good parent doesn't just decide whether or not their kid's going to get TV time or they're going to they're gonna get a phone or they're, gonna, or they're going to um, have a reading time after dinner. They don't decide those things based on tonight, a good parent. What a good parent does is they, is they look and they go, what kind of son, what kind of daughter, what kind of young adult, what kind of adult, what kind of person who contributes to society, do I want my child to be? And then based on that, we're talking about decades later, they begin to make decisions about what they do with their time, what they teach them, what they give them, what they don't give them, their character building, right? A, a parent who thinks that they're good, that's just looking at the moment, oh, he just, we would be unhappy if I don't give it to him or her, right? And th that might feel good to them, but that, that, is not, that is not wise or purposeful, and it usually comes to folly. God is not like that, though. God deals with you and me and everybody at once. He brings all the, all the situations together in a long-term effect of who he wants us to become, who he wants uh, to bring into himself and, and into eternity. His purposes do not change. And also that means his purposes don't change with the times. In other words, God doesn't, God doesn't go with the latest fads. God, God isn't saying, you know what? It used to be really great that people were honest, but now, not so much. It used to be that we, we should be polite, but now, it used to be we were formal, but now we're going to be informal. No, he's not changed by the times. His purposes remain the same from the beginning until the end. His plans are made on a complete knowledge and control which to extend to all things past, all things present, and all things future. So there could be no sudden emergencies for God, no unexpected developments taken by surprise. There is nothing that happens in our economy, in your life, in this world where God was like, whoa, didn't see that coming. Let's have an emergency meeting with the angels. Let's all get together. How do we take care of that one? Never happens. Not even close. God's purposes do not change. Last, God the Son does not change. Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's another verse that's clearly saying that he is divine because that only applies to God. Though leaders change, including myself, Jesus does not. Christ is the same all time. He served faithfully yesterday, dying on the cross to make atonement for our sins. He serves faithfully today, interceding for us on behalf, of, on behalf of us before the Father. And he will remain faithful forever. Because of what Christ has done in the past, what he is, does in the present, we know that he is sufficient for any need that we may have, including the tough parts of life which we would rather avoid including myself. So when you talk about what it means to be consistent and dependable, um, God is the gold, platinum, whatever this precious metal at the top is, standard. He is the standard. And, and why that is important, um, I, I, I'm, I'm going to call this the true north principle. The true north principle. True north is the direction that points directly towards the geographical north pole. It's a fixed point in the Earth's globe. <clears throat> now, many of us now have like Google Maps and whatnot that kind of show you around. Um, but even that uh, is dependent on true north. It, it tr basically, you know where you are and where you're going to be. You can tell by going, okay, wherever you are, you get out your little compass here. And the needle points to north every single time. If just once it did not, our planes would go down, our cars would go off track, our people would be at lost in the wilderness. 
And the reason that we use, use the true north is because it's always been true north. It's never changed. Ever. Has it ever changed? So we can count on it. We can depend on it. It's consistent. We can, we can build technologies and our life and our very lives upon it because it's that dependable. God is that dependable. But there is no politics. There is no pastor. There is no life philosophy. There is no government. There is no economy that can say the same. Does that, that does not change, that does not waver, that is, that is the same yesterday, today, forever. Only God. Fellowship with God, trust in His Word, living by faith, standing on the promises of God are essentially the same realities for us today as they were all throughout Scriptures. The situations have changed. Sometimes you read the Bible and you're like, I don't even get what's going on here. And I don't see people bowing to idols or I don't see people getting married that way. That's not the point. The point is the God that they were serving, the situation, His heart, His justice, His love. And this thought should bring us comfort as we enter into the perplexities of each day amid all the changes and uncertainties of life of which there are more and of which things are changing even faster. But God, the Son, and the Holy Spirit remain the same to lead us, to guide us, to save us, to bring us unto themselves. Amen? Amen. To know God is to know this kind of consistency. To know God is to know this kind of dependability. To know God is to have this kind of security. May that be true in our lives. Father God, I just pray. Um, this is one of those things where I think we listen and we, and we think, man, this is a big idea, but sometimes it's hard to know. But what do I do with that? And so, Lord, we need your Holy Spirit. You, 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 the Holy Spirit is known as the Spirit of Truth. We ask that the Holy Spirit that lives and resides within followers of Jesus would illuminate to us and draw us close to you that we may begin to understand. I know we won't ever completely understand you, dear God, but at least understand you enough to know you better, to follow you more faithfully, and to trust you unceasingly. We pray this in the name of Jesus, who is our God and our Christ. Amen and amen.